Welcome, my name is Chris and I'm here this week to go over this topic of what I just played. Playing a 12 bar blues with some quarter note shell style chords, just three or four note chords, really just three notes. So I'm going to pick this up from the last time I talked about this. I will link the pertinent videos that you should understand before getting into this level. I've got a few videos that prep you on the different shapes you need, the 12 bar blues, and how to play simpler movements like whole notes and half note. And now we're getting into quarter note. So I wanna give you a few different movements you can do, things you can think about. I love doing this because I'm not the most adept at jazz chords. I see a lot of better guitarists playing some really beautiful chords, but we kinda of need some working chords that we can play tunes with. And these shell chords are great because they really you build onto them. Um, it's not like you re have to relearn new chords. You kind of build onto these shell voicings and it helps you play harmony on the guitar, which is what we're trying to do here. So we're doing 12 bar blues. Um, I got the form there in blue. You can review that. That's a simple thing. We are adding the sharp four diminished on measure six, which is a really common move you often hear in blues tunes and in bebop language. Also, we're adding more movement like the three six. Uh, what is that, bar eight? And then we'll have, of course, a normal turnaround. Um, the two can be minor on the end. We'll look at both cases. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna review here is, I'll show you these chord, the seven chord voicings. You'll just need two at first. Um, step one. So this is what I kind of showed off a little bit last time. So if I've got like G7, what other chords or sounds can I play to get to C7? Which is bar two, right? That's the idea was we're learning some like other substitutions and, and ways to lead. On the two feel, you can always remember to do this, just lead in chromatically to the next chord. And that's a really nice sound. You just keep on doing it, right? And it gets a little weird when we got two chords uh, in a row of the same. So like, you know, you know bar three and four. But I, I talk about that in the last video that is linked below. So now we're getting into some other movements. But that chromatic idea, you should really exhaust just to practice it. And again, when you're doing this in time and in a form like this, you are practicing like a much bigger thing than just chord voicings, of course. It's kind of like a thing in time. So you can go nice and slow, but realize that's really good work. And that's kind of where the rub can be is just putting this in time. So nice and slow, let me show this concept off of just playing a lot of chromatic movement with just what I've got up there. Um, the only thing you might not know is this sharp four diminished. So let me go and show that to you real quick, this form, and then I'll also review the seven chord forms. Um, so we've got this thickest string, it's G7, you can see that? So that's the one you wanna know. I'm skipping the A string, just muting it. This is a gray seven chord shape, it's root seven three. Okay, really wanna know that. Practice playing out every fret like this, practice not looking, practice making it sound really good, and that's all you hear. Okay, and then the other one is like on a C7, it would be three, two, three, no skips, just A, D, and G string, three, two, three. G7, what we just played here, if we play it up here at 10, 9, 10, I get a, a different order. I get root three, seven, instead of root seven, three. Right, so a little different. So you really have to know these, and I would go back to that other video, play two feel, go, or you could go like this, play a chromatic approach. And that's a really good way to practice this chord shape, is just put it in a form like this, because you get to really exhaust it. So now turning that up to quarter notes, uh, let's see what happens, and I'll try to use the dominant shape as much as possible. Oh, there's one more shape we need. It will be diminish. So diminish this shell chord shape, if I play it at, like on this chord, so C7 is a four, right? And then sharp four diminish. It's actually C7, eight, eight, nine, and then the thickest goes to nine, nine, eight, nine. That's kind of what chords do, so on piano, if you play a C chord, C, E, G, like this. And then you move your thumb up a half, half step black key to C sharp. Same idea, right? C sharp, E, G. So there's a lot of commonality there, right? Um, that's really cool. And this is a C sharp diminished seven. 
So this form is also related to number three. It's a few different chords, but this is one of the chords it is, is diminished. So this form I'll use, and another cool thing about this chord I'll mention real quick, is a diminished harmony, you can move it in thirds, minor thirds, which is three frets, and it's the same sound. Right, huge guitar trick. If you've ever played jazz guitar on diminished chords or whatever, or been listening to enough guitar, you'll hear that trick. You'll hear like that kind of sound. Right, so, okay, so that's the other shape you need to know now. So you've got the seven, and then I'm gonna use that on the C sharp diminish. And then I'm just gonna use a bunch of stuff around all these chords, and let's see what happens when I do a run through. We're gonna go super slow, right? This is a thing I'm gonna be talking about soon. There's this uh, idea called the Kenny Warner Learning Diamond, and it is basically learning how to limit yourself. If you're gonna do something full speed, you need to do a smaller portion. If you're gonna do something, the full, port the full excerpt, you need to do a smaller speed or worry about accuracy less. So it's a really, really good way to just keep that limiting um, focus right to our practicing which is the whole idea of learning new stuff okay nice and slow super slow we're going about one two three now see what i'm going to do when i move this around and we're going to be playing different things you know if you play along with me um because there's multiple ways to go you can go above or below so let's give a shot ready uh, one two three four this is my four chord Kind of weird here, but we'll learn more movements today. Here's this diminish. Three frets, right? G. Three. Uh, oh my bad. It would be one. I could go up here. All right, I could even walk up like this. Here I go walk down to six. Let's do this again, okay, just to see. Gives you my ideas here. G, I'm just moving G around chromatically to get used to this. And I'm doing like on, off, on. I did a G four times, that's fine. We're gonna learn this movement today. I'll show you that. It's okay to repeat yourself too. And then or I could do it up here. And then there I played the one on the three, right there. But you know, if I play, um, I'll start. I'll start on the second leg. So I'll just go up C, G, or well, I right hear. So I was on C sharp diminish. I could walk down to this, or I could do one here. Three, th well, we're gonna learn some other inversions I wanna show you, but I'm just gonna hold my tongue because <laughs> we'll get into it. But that's the idea, right? Go nice and slow. I'll go and finish it out here. Here's a two. Um, two. Five. And then to one. F, E, and two, two, the five, and one. Right, so do whatever. The idea is to exhaust this to really um, get the most out of it you can. And really this thinking on our feet, playing in time thing, this is the hard part about jazz, right? It's really tough to do this at first because we just play too fast. We practice too fast. The whole point of practice is you go slow so you can actually think intentionally and change what you're playing and have an effect on it, right? That's the only way you can kind of beat the thing and actually become better is to really take your time. I'll try it one, one time in the key C just to show this off. Or no, let's do a weird key, let's do a D flat. Because that's another part of your brain, right? All the 12 keys will kind of have different parts of your brain that you'll just have muscle memory with. So let's see how I do in D flat. Who knows? Okay, one, two, three, uh. Keep it easy, right? You don't, for this concept, diminish. Six, two, five. Um, 
All right. So, you know, keep it simple. And again, the idea is to feel that heat of the time, no matter the speed, you can go nice and slow. We're trying to get that feeling of walking, the feeling of like adjusting to, to the terrain, fixing it, right? When it gets weird, it's just fixing it, getting out of, of a weird spot, right? With walking, we can do that, and all bassists know this. You can get yourself out of some trouble, and that's just how it's going to go. And also, what you get for this kind of trust, uh, you know, it's like learning how to just trust. You're on a hike. You have to trust your legs to not, you know, whatever, not misstep. Um, what we get out of that, though, what we get in return is spontaneity, uh, musicality, the, I mean, really flow state, right, that you want. So that's, it's a compromise, but that's the only way to get that flow state and to be able to surprise yourself with your playing. Like hearing Keith Jarrett, right? Like respond to the piano during his music making is just incredible because for some people that's really pretentious, but when you understand how mysterious all this is eventually, it's pretty cool, right? Because you'll just play stuff and be like, oh man, I'm, I was kind of zoned out and I just played the coolest thing. Or I surprise myself with the quality of my playing um, and I often don't surprise myself with that too but you know it's a really good feeling um, to realize the automatic process right and it really acquiring this language I uh, briefly I'll tell you there's this guy years and years ago when I was in college I was playing in a combo and I think the other two people moved away at some point and I was stuck with wanting to play gigs but having no band and I was trying to find a bass player. I eventually found one, I think, or actually I didn't uh, because the people who could play bass couldn't like walk. Uh, it's tough, you know, it just wasn't a really jazz school. And uh, that was a hard thing for them to actually be able to walk just standard tunes, you know. So I eventually just got a loop pedal and I uh, made do with that. And that was kind of a good practice for me because I could do stuff like this. I would practice the head of something and I might play two feel uh, at first and then I would go into walking like this, you know, like all these movements. So, but number one, or yeah, number one is the one you just want to get really comfortable. The LT chord means leading tone chord. That leading tone concept's just like a big thing in classical music, usually meaning like that kind of thing. But in this case, we're just using a whole chord to lead. Right, that's the whole point of these in-between chords is just to lead to the next chord, to take your ear, um, to lead it to the next prominent harmony. Okay, so man, number two. This is the really cool movement that you can do a lot in the blues, and it is basically harmonizing the, on whatever chord you're on, let's say G, you're harmonizing these notes, three to five chromatic. Right? This is the sound of, I think, Basin Street Blues. Don't, don't get around much anymore. Has this in there some, this movement. It actually has that harmonic movement that I'm about to show you, right? So it's a really good movement. And we're harmonizing three to five chromatic and we're using the chords. We're gonna use one as a, um, you can do it a few ways, but we're gonna use it as a seven, right? Because we're the blues. Uh, two minor. And then this is this flat three diminish, this right shape we've already looked at. So there it is again. Now this is leading to G over B. And that movement is, that's not too bad, right? So if you've never played two minor, just five, 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 like a fake phone number. And then uh, this one diminishes a six, five, six. Again, same string set, no A string. And then here we're just moving the sixes up to seven and the five stays put. Nice. So six five six, seven five seven, and this is a really good uh, shape to know, and this shape too. This is an inversion of a uh, major chord, right? So if I go down here to G major seven or G seven or G six, that's another good shape to know that we'll need to look at soon. The six shape. So, anyways, this one has no seven. Is that you could add the seven? But I tend not to, because this, this leads nicely. You can just go to C7. So that's the point of that movement is one, minor two, flat three diminished, one over three. Often goes to the next chord because of the cycle of fourths in this music. 
that is really um, popular. This is many progressions, many jazz tunes are like this. So we can use that movement uh, a few spots. We can use it one to four, just like I did. A little old school too, right? This is not really modern by any standards, but um, nonetheless, it's really good language to know. It's what the modern language comes from this language, right? So you can also do it, um, I could do it on five, approaching one. So we could do it on the next strings too, but I was mainly looking at this set for you today because the next string, the voicings just aren't quite as good. Um, what would this one be? So they're okay, right? And they're good to learn for sure on any string set. But I would kind of mainly, because of, we're also dealing with the form, I would mainly f focus on this string set. So if you do it five to one, we're getting kind of high, but totally doable. And it's really good for longer harmonies, right? So you could do it at the beginning. I could also hold off until measure four to do it. And then, then now I have the diminished chord I can play, right? And that diminished, remember, this diminished, diminished like lead to often a chord a half step above, not always. But this chord is also like C sharp diminished, which is sharp four diminished. It's also E diminished, which is also G diminished, which is also B flat diminished. I know it's confusing. <laughs> But those are the, all the same chord. And actually in Barry's world, this is also Barry Harris. I'll talk more about in the future. This is also a seven flat nine chord. But that's, it's a really cool thing to see how you know potent this chord is. So this chord is, it has this symmetrical sound that our ears are like, what is going on, right? It sounds like, right, the ultimate tension, right? So this chord moves around really nice, just as like a placeholder. Right, so it's kind of cool. Uh, I'm getting on, uh, I want to get on the number three. There's something I want to show you that we're just talking about. But, oh, one other thing you can do with this is you can move the, do this movement in two measures instead of one. So that would be essentially just making it like twice as long. And you could do this on a two feel. You could go. So I could go one. I could just calm. What if I, I'm trying to think if I could even get in between those with other chords. So I could do that. And then here, can I lead? And then here, I could do that. Or I could do, um, that's more modern. That's kind of cool. This, I've never done this thing before, right? So good methods really help us grow, continue to grow. Like I've never done that movement. So going boom, 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 boom. That one I don't love. What could we do? Maybe it's just a pressure from above. So I could go boom, 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 boom. And then boom, boom, or boom. That do the diminish from above to get to G over B. I like that. It's like a, a C minor sound. So that, right, that's the beauty of this stuff. So I've never done that. And what I did was just did this movement, but like add their half notes, right? So I did one and then I did uh, flat two minor, just chromatic leading in to minor two. And then here, what did I do? I think I did Approach this from above. Or, no, I did that. So, yeah, it's hard to remember all. Boom, 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 boom. Where I could get to four like that. Boom, 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 boom. Hip, right? I dig it. So, that's a really a lot of language that we're just inserting, you can kind of just continue to zoom in. If you zoom in more, you're getting the chord melody, like Wes Montgomery stuff, which is great, right? So with Barry's method too, Barry Harris method, that allows for zooming in and zooming out a lot. Like you can find language to play in 16th notes and also in eighth notes or quarter note triplets. It's like super cool. Well, let's get into number three of this as well, because this is the, one of the things I wanted to show you here. We've already added the diminished, right? This, 
chord here, it looks like a D diminish, right? 10, which is also the same as B and G sharp and F diminish. Uh, it, is a, it is a D diminish. It's also a G7, right? 10, 9, 10 on the, that's the G7 shape on the A string. And this is moved down to the fifth. So this is like a G7 over D. And also it's a D minor six. Because in Barry's world, this is a really cool connection. The like fifth of a chord is related to the root. A D minor six is the same as G7. Technically G9. But uh, as a G dominant chord. So they're the same thing. So G. And I can play ideas from D minor over this chord and it's super hip. But that's another lesson. Okay, so this is another uh, shape. So that, because the reason I said that is I could go boom, 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 do, do, do. Because otherwise, I don't know where else to go. I could do something on this F. That's like the seven in the bass. So this fifth in the bass, and I like that it has the third in there. All right, and then here, what if I did boom, 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 boom. I could do it again, or I could start this song off. What's the other one I was gonna do? I could go boom, 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 boom. Let's say here I just do, and then here I could do it again. I could do it longer, and I could do that one movement I did. Boom, boo, boo, boo. Ah, I forgot it. <laughs> do, do. Oh yeah, do, 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 do. Right, it's kind of verby, but. Uh, then we have C7, I'm just gonna move it around. Or I could do it here, do this movement. You could learn it on this other string too. So that's a possibility, but you could do boom, boom, boom. C sharp diminish. Um, what could I do here? I could just move this around. I could also go three frets up. And then here I could dump back off. Let's say I go down. And then I could use this. So these diminished chords almost always have a chord tone of what you want above. So you can kind of ride them. Boom, boom, boom. Um, boom, boom. Right? Or boom, 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 boom. I already did this one. Or boom, 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 boom. Right? It was really cool. They, you can kind of get off at whatever level you want. Uh, I'm going too fast for this, right? So <laughs> I need to go slower. I'm feeling that alarm in the, my head go off. But I'm hoping you can see some of these possibilities, right? So you have to kind of take a command of this stuff and limit yourself in run-throughs with a lot of intent and ways you can kind of be mostly successful. So say, to say, I'm only gonna use this shape, maybe or I'm gonna practice this and I'll practice it from one to four. And then you could do it on the four as well to practice it again. And you could dump off on the, this is that second inversion, G7. Um, and then here you could, you know, walk your way down. You got this one too, you could play on the one. So that, that's ultimately your a really good goal here is voice leading. This is kind of like chess, right? It's like, a, I'm not good at chess, but I'm not good at this either, but I feel better at this. It's somewhat like you're responding to what choice is best, um, depending on where you found yourself, right? So if I go boom, 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 let's say here I walk down and there's some other movements we could find and I'm just trying to find, okay, that I landed there, that's nice. And here I could do something else, right? I could, I could do, So I did that inversion to get back up, or boom, boom, boom. Because this can approach, diminish can go to the this. Diminish can go to anything. Diminish can also just go to other diminished chords. That's extremely uh, useful in that way. That's hip, right? So there's so many th things you could do. You could start here. Boom, 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 boom. So really get creative here, and there's other shell chord shapes we could do, but I'm nearing the end of this. So that's kind of how to work on this. Go really, really slow. Like, I'm gonna have a video on timing. I don't have my met metronome right now, but I would go like, put the, if you can put two and four on only, that's really, really good. 
and a one and three on and using it in creative ways or just two or just four even. So imagine going like one, two. So this is like something like, I don't know, I don't have perfect feel on this, but 40, let's say. You, this could be just 40 alone. So you're actually going 80. One, two, three, like that. And you just go, I mean, you know, that'd be like. And you even start with some of these double chords. This is a really good way to practice because we have the feel. And also, like there, I just played a random D flat. Who knows? And I can start to move. And I'm focusing on good feel. I did three, or one instead of three again. And you always go back to that. I might have to kind of isolate some of these, but if you can get them in time. Right, and it's only one form, and knowing the form, obviously I know the form. I've practiced this in all 12 keys. Um, I can do a lot more of that, but I know this form very well, so that's obviously needed, right? The whole point of practice is to kind of get things integrated into your body and into your head and ears and like deeper than like your thoughts, because you can't use it if it's not. And people think you can, but you can't. If you find out it's kind of just lying to yourself. They're like, oh yeah, I'll remember that part. Or I'll, I'll play it like this or whatever. Uh, you probably won't. And the way to really test that is to just give it to your body and say like, you're in charge of, of this information, right? You're in charge of these chord shapes. My, some level my brain's in charge of the, of the form, but it's not like my whatever default it's just not my like normal thoughts. It's just a lot deeper. And if you work on stuff in multiple keys, you start to get really good at this. Um, it's just an ethic. You want to try this. Like now, can I do it? In, you know, whatever E flat, right? And keep it as simple as you need. So last thing, real quick, I'm running long, is adding two fives. So you can do some two five motions. You probably see me do. And if you don't know what that is, two fives are usually. Uh, minor seven chord, like the two, right? D minor seven, 10, 10, 10 up there, 10, skip 10, 10, or on this other one, five, three, five. I'll have a chord chart of these shapes. Uh, there's only really one, two, three, four, five, six so far. That's it. I think. Maybe it might be, oh yeah, then I should do the six chord which is another one I'll put on there too. That's, that's a good one to know. We'll get into that. Okay, so two, five, one. You can do a two, five, two. Um, you'll often see one done in bar four to the four chord. Lots of numbers here. And I can do approach with, with those as well. Right, so you can really work on this kind of adding a bunch of stuff in. Like that. Um, you can also do one, you could even approach the three. You can kind of start to get out of it. Cause so, you know, because this is all, three, six, two, five, one is all fourths. And a five going to one's a fourth, which is confusing. <laughs> but that means you can do a five to three. So that'd be seven. So that'd be this. So that'd be sound like this, four, sharp four diminish, one, seven, three, six, two. So that's kind of hip, right? So one, seven, three, six, two. Right, you see what I was doing there with the extra? Um, you could kind of approach it different ways. One, diminished, seven, um, diminished, three, diminished, six, diminished, D diminished two or minor, right? So that diminish, you could approach it with all those. It sounds kind of funky and you might have to use a backing track a little bit. But um, when you start to get really good at these voicings, you'll use like less and less backing tracks because you'll know the harmony better and you won't need the backing track as much to practice like harmonically, right? To practice like. Right, and the 
but when I'm doing this, I'm trying to really um, hear the line or hear the harmony of my playing. Like the diminish. Chord tones. Right, and it's all about hitting these kind of spots. And to realize like how you don't need to play a, a bunch of stuff to hit the spots. Like you can just kind of hang out. Like so sometimes I'll even do this while I'm comping and go like, like. Because remember this, this is C7. And I can move this, so G diminish is C7. Or you think this is G diminished, G minor six, C7, and it's just a bunch of stuff, right? So I could go. Or I could kind of just kind of hang on this, and I can even get like more diminished. You kind of have a pedal G thing. So you'll find all these ways to kind of mix it up based on these new shapes you can go to. It's really a lot of filler, right? Um, that's kind of the secret here is like we're just adding a bunch of um, resources for us to get out of wherever spot we're in and also have that ability to kind of play more and more. Like one of my favorite moments from this Julian Lodge solo, I can link it below. Autumn Leaves, so many years ago, he looks like a baby. He's super young and he just kills it, of course. And he starts it off with this really improvised, long thing. It was a very kind of through composed intro. And then he goes into the tune kind of ballad and then he goes quicker. And then he takes a couple courses, just strumming chords, quarter notes with some big, like something, I think it was playing in C minor or in G minor. So like, and he was playing like, some of these shell chords, but a lot more hip and, and more advanced. And uh, I still need to study that. I think people have tapped it out and studied that solo. So I'll link that below. But the two fives are really fun. And the main one you can do, so we, we did measure four, right? And then we did measure, what is that? Five, six, seven. We could go one, three, or one, seven to three. That's kind of a two five motion, right? But there's no minor chord in there, but. So you're one, seven, three, six. Uh, also, this is getting back into chromatic stuff, but you'll notice you could do that, or you could do F7, which is a tritone sub of B7, right? So these are, there's so many paths here, you'll start to see a line and different options. Um, the other spot you could do it, that's mainly it. Um, you could always do a quick one too, like even in the middle of a five chord. So the same, like, so go at the end, we have A minor, I could do A minor. And then here, I could do a quick two five. So that's another way to add some motion that is kind of for free. And if you need to, uh, kind of last quarter notes to fill, to, you know, whatever, to um, wrap things up, then that's fine. And no one will know. So that's what I'll leave you at today. Um, I'll play through once with this um, two fives added and all this stuff added. And actually I'll do a couple courses and we'll see how it goes. Uh, and I'll see you on the other side.
uh, G seven flat five with a nine. So something like that. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of see how to work on this. Again, go slow. Get really into playing slow. You get really, really good. To kind of have a curiosity about this, take it slow. Do not, like there's no, well, you don't get any prizes for playing too fast and avoiding things you can't play, right? And they, that's, that's fine to do. Um, that's the normal kind of way I think of playing music. But it's really fun to engage with this stuff and to see how slow you can do this. And um, you could also go back to, I've got a baseline video you could watch to uh, learn how to play a baseline in this pattern. And it's a very similar way of thinking, though there's less shapes needed. But uh, I can do the same thing as a basis, just kind of lead us through all this stuff. And uh, yeah, I hope you have fun practicing this. Let me know how it goes. And let me know if you have any questions. Uh, like and subscribe. And I do teach lessons. I occasionally have time for one-on-one -on -one uh, virtual lessons. So let me know if you would like that and I can kind of help you through um, some of your practicing dilemmas because I think that's a really big problem is like there's so much content but like not enough, um, you know, really understanding of how to work on it, right? And how to work with yourself and how to like accept all the stuff you're playing to enjoy the journey. Um, that's what I've kind of discovered. I'm, try I'm trying to pass it along. So, okay, until next time, I'll see you then. Thanks.